All right, everyone, so welcome to the next lecture. So guys, in this lecture, we're gonna be uh, discussing some topics. Let me make a list of what we're gonna talk about today. So guys, we're gonna start by talking about density, uh, and then we're gonna talk about uh, matter, and then we're gonna talk about atoms. Okay, all right, guys, so uh, for density, so this is gonna be a continuation of your math review. Uh, where um, are we going to talk about the formula for density? So, guys, you know the density uh, formula is density is equal to mass over volume. So, guys, uh, we have talked a little bit about this in the math review uh, when we talked about the units for density. So, guys, let's first understand what is the difference between density uh, and uh, and mass. So, on how when we say something is heavy or something is light, how is that different from when we say something is uh, more dense? or something is less dense. So guys, on how heavy or light something is, we are only focusing on the mass. So that is how heavy or light something is. So that's one uh, criteria under density. So density is not just worried about how heavy something is, like how much stuff, how much matter you have, but it also cares about that that matter is in how much space and how much volume. So guys, uh, we also need to talk about the space uh, that is being occupied by the matter, okay? So not, not that just heavy or light something is uh, when you hold it, but also how much volume, how, how big or small it is in the size as well. So guys, density is a combination of these two. So it's telling us, um, how closely packed the particles are. So if, if you have something very dense, then you have more mass in less space. When you see something which is much more scattered where the molecules are farther apart. So let's take two examples, guys. So we have example for iron, so any metal, uh, and then think of uh, cotton, okay? So guys, um, let's say you get one kilogram of iron and you get one kilograms of cotton. So you see both of them um, are actually gonna be the same mass. So if you're gonna hold them, uh, they're gonna be, equal, they're gonna be um, equally heavy because this is one kilogram and this is one kilogram because what we're looking at is only mass right now. But if you actually think about this and think uh, how much space will iron metal take? So let's say we have an iron metal bar so we are thinking, okay, this metal bar is going to take how much space? Is it gonna be uh, more space or less space versus a cotton ball? So imagine you got a cotton ball, uh, uh, which is, um, uh, let's say it's, it's, so you can imagine if, if you got one kilogram of cotton, uh, that's gonna be a big uh, ball of cotton. But, uh, so what we see here is that the molecules here in the case of iron are gonna be much more tightly packed, so the density is gonna be more for iron. Density is gonna be bigger uh, for iron versus the density of cotton. And why is that? Is because even if you see the top number, the mass is the same for both, but their volumes are gonna be different. So let's say, let's give out a volume to both of these. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna assume that one kilogram, let's say, of, of uh, iron uh, is take, so this is 1,000 grams. So let's say this is taking uh, 500 ml of space. I'm just putting out a number, guys. Do not trust these actual numbers. I'm just giving this as an example. So let's say, guys, you got one kilograms, uh, or uh, let me change this to grams so that usually, guys, grams is a more common unit uh, used for density, so that's why I'm going to be using that. So let's say this is 1,000 grams, which is the same thing as one kilogram. And let me change this also from one kilogram to a thousand grams so that they look similar. Uh, so this one is a 500, this is taking 500, 500 ml of space. Now you can also tell, okay, we don't wanna use the ml, we wanna use a centimeter cube. Yes, you can use centimeter cube here as well because you're talking about the volume of a solid. Now, uh, when, I I, when we say the mass is the same for a cotton, uh, its volume is not gonna be same because its volume is gonna be much more. So let's say, uh, if this was taking, if iron was taking 500 centimeter cube of space, let me actually change that to centimeter cube because this is going to look better for solids. Uh, and then here, instead, it's 2,000 uh, centimeters cube. Okay. So now, if you do the math, what is 1,000 divided by 500? 
that's two grams per centimeter cube. This is my density for, uh, for iron. Now when I go to cotton, in the case of cotton, if I do the math here, 1000 divided by 2000 is actually 0.5 grams per centimeter cube. So you can see that the density for cotton is smaller than the density for the iron. And why is that? Is because the cotton is taking much more volume uh, than what the uh, what the cotton uh, what the iron is taking. Okay. So now, guys, um, what we're going to do here is we're going to see on how do we actually find densities in a lab. Okay. So now the lab uh, that you're doing for density. I guess it's also going to be a useful lab for you to understand the concept of density. So um, again, guys, for density, the simple formula is density is equal to mass or volume. So if I'm trying to find density of a metal bar, then I must know its mass and I must know its volume. So this is some kind of metal, a solid object for which I'm trying to find the density. So I need mass and volume. How do you find the mass of this metal bar? You just put it on the weighing scale. You just put it on the weighing scale and get the mass. So let's say you put it on the weighing scale and the mass that you see is 55 grams. So I'm just putting out a number. This is how much it weighs when you put it on the weighing scale. Okay. Now the second part is finding out the volume for which we need to actually set up an experiment because finding the volume of solid objects is not um, where you can just take a, see if you have a symmetrical solid, uh, like a cube, a perfect cube. You can measure each of the side and then cube it to find the volume. But usually the solids that we're talking about generally working in life, they're not going to be uh, a perfect uh, shape, like a perfect cylinder, a perfect square, a perfect cube, and not like that. So imagine you got uh, this metal bar and you, uh, and this is not uh, even uh, from all from the the radius is not even or think of a think of a marker uh, a pen marker uh, you cannot just find the radii and find the uh, the uh, volume of uh, of a marker like that what you need to do instead is you have to do what we call water displacement now what happens in water displacement what do we do in water displacement so guys, in water displacement, what we do is we take uh, a graduated cylinder and in the graduated cylinder, you fill it with some amount of water, okay? So you just take the tap water and you fill it, let's say we fill it with 50 milliliters of H2O. Now what we do is we take this metal bar and we put it into the graduated cylinder. So now I guess as soon as I'm gonna put this uh, metal into the graduate cylinder, what is gonna to happen to its volume? Of course, its volume is gonna go up because now that uh, metal bar is taking some space and it's displacing uh, the water. That's why this is called water displacement. So now let's say guess the new volume that we have here uh, is um, uh, 70 mLs. Okay, so this rise in volume of 20 mLs is caused because of the metal bar. So the volume of the metal bar is how much? So the volume of the metal bar is equal to, it's going to be your V final minus V initial. What is V final V initial? V final is 70 mLs, the volume that you have after you put the metal bar minus 50 mLs. This is without the metal bar. So the difference is 20 mLs and this is your volume of the metal. So you see how you have to do this experiment to figure out the volume of, of solids. So we already got the mass, mass was simple. You just put it on the weighing scale and you get the, you get the mass. Now, if you have to find the density gaze, for density, your simple formula is density equals mass over volume. So for the mass, you put that number 55 grams. And for the volume, you put this number 20 mLs. It's the difference guys that you use, okay? So now I guess if you try to find uh, the density, then your answer is gonna be 2.75 grams per ml, okay? Now guys, uh, if you wanna change the unit from grams per ml to grams per centimeter cube, because as you learned in the previous um, uh, uh, lectures, uh, for, uh, for solids, we do not like to use um, ml. We like to use centimeter cube, meter cube, and something like that. And if you remember, one ml is actually equal to one centimeter cube. So I don't need to do any conversion here. I just simply change ml to centimeter cube because they mean the same thing. Okay. 
uh, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, right? So now, guys, uh, what we just covered took care of uh, of the densities for solids. Now let's talk about the density for um, let's talk about the density for liquids. Now our formula is still the same: density is mass over volume. But this time, finding the mass and volume is going to be a little different. Now, if I give you liquid, a bottle which has some uh, water in it, and you're going to find its density, so you want to find its mass and the volume. Now, how do you find the mass of a liquid? Can you just pour it onto the wing scale? Of course not. You cannot just put it on the wing scale. You need some container first uh, that you're going to uh, put on the wing scale, uh, and then add the water into that, uh, uh, let's say, a cylinder, uh, and that is what is going to give you the mass. So what you do here is, let's say you got a, uh, this is your, I'm trying to draw a wing scale. So this will have a reading here and there will be um, a plate where you can put different um, uh, things on top. Uh, uh, and then you can, you'll get the mass here in, in grams, okay? So uh, what you'll do first guys is, uh, you will be taking a small graduated cylinder. So that's where you're finding the density for a liquid. Uh, and what you do is you take a 10 ml cylinder for that. So 10 ml graduated cylinder. So what you do is uh, you, you take the empty cylinder and you wanna make sure it's completely dry from inside. Uh, and then you take the cylinder and you put it on the wing scale. Okay, when you put this on the wing scale, what are we trying to do first? We are trying to get the mass of the empty cylinder so that later on when I add the liquid to it, I know how much does the liquid weigh because I can subtract uh, the mass of the cylinder from the total mass. Okay, so we take the cylinder and we get the mass of the cylinder. So the first thing you do is you find the mass of cylinder. Once you get the mass of cylinder, uh, let's say when I put this on the scale, uh, it says 30 grams, I'm just saying a number guys here. Um, so 30 grams, uh, and then you take the liquid water and you put it onto the cylinder. So you put it uh, into the cylinder. So now let's say it goes from 30 to 40 grams because you added liquid. Now, how much liquid you added? So by that, I mean how much uh, volume liquid you added. So okay, since this thing is a graduate of cylinder and it says 10 here and say zero here. So if I fill it to the mark 10, then how much liquid do I have in say? I have 10 mLs. Okay, so now guys, if you have to find the density, your density is gonna be equal to the mass over volume. So guys, what is the mass of the uh, liquid going to be? Is it going to be 30? Is it going to be 40? Or is it going to be the difference? So guys, the mass of the cylinder, oh, I'm sorry, the mass of the liquid is actually equal to the mass of cylinder, mass of cylinder plus the liquid minus the mass of the cylinder. This will give me the mass of the liquid. So if my mass of cylinder and liquid is 40 grams, and I subtract the mass of the cylinder, which is 30, gram, 30 grams, the difference is gonna be 10 grams. So that is the mass for the liquid only. And that's what you're gonna put here on the top because you're finding density of liquid, not the cylinder or not cylinder and liquid, just the liquid. And what was the volume guys? It was 10 mLs of the liquid. So now what we got is one gram per mL. So guys, this is what your density for the liquid is gonna be, okay? Right, so now guys, if uh, that makes sense, you guys will be working on the practice problems that are posted on Canvas and you will uh, get to see what your exam questions might look like. Okay, now guys, uh, let's 